Welcome back everybody to another tutorial on the Interaction System. I'm your host Robert Taylor from um, Wonderscape Studios. So last time, you know, the blunder <laughs> of why the Interaction System wasn't working and all that jazz and figuring that all out and making it work. Um, for the next 30,000 years I'll be kicking myself for that one. But anyways, last time we got this system working to where when we walk up to it, it'll tell you what uh, you know what button to push and what the action is and what the item is you're looking at. Um, we did not set it up to where they would be separated based off of what they say. For that, you would need to create an enumeration and set the code up that way. Um, and we're not doing that in this tutorial. <clears throat> I can in future tutorials if someone wants. But anyways, when you click it, it does what it see left the cube and when I let go it puts it back uh, so that's what we did so now we're going to add another feature this feature being um, making it to where there is an outline if you recall when I was showing it off there was an outline around it um, it won't be very easy it won't be very noticeable here with this being white uh, so we'll do what we did here I'm gonna delete that because I don't need it come over here and delete this because I don't need it <clears throat> now that we have that fixed um, the what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here into the object oh, already in the object when I come over here I'm just gonna pick a random color bio now the red cool now what we're gonna do is create the highlight <clears throat> I'm not gonna pretend that I understand uh, all the complexity and the math behind how this process works um, what you'll learn to understand as you go through this journey um, good game designers and developers create their game um, and make the code as they go great developers will utilize code that others have made in the past that they are legally allowed to utilize in their own projects and adapt and change them as necessary <clears throat> because why recreate the wheel so with that said <clears throat> we're going to be Recreate, and we're going to be copying this guy here. The link will be in the tutorial. Um, now, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, if you don't want to follow, you know, all the step-by-step -step detailed instructions, you can always just download the um, the material itself, or you can download his whole sample project uh, showing how it's done. Uh, with that said, um, in the link, uh, also down below, I will have a link to this so that you can download it directly if you don't want to uh, come to this website that way you have your options <clears throat> now with that said um, the, it, the process uh, regardless will take some time uh, so we're going to go ahead and get that working and get it set up so that it is doing what it is supposed to do so first things first we need to come over here I'm going to right click add a new folder Call it materials. I'm going to open it up. Um, and, you know, once you've downloaded it, <clears throat> I have right here in my download folders from a while back when I did download it. Whoops. All the black. Uh, and that's what we're going to pull from. So if I right click here and let's see. Oh, I can't do it from here. I got to do it from right here. Show in Explorer. So it brings up a window explorer, interaction materials, interaction system materials, so we know where, we're, where we are supposed to be. I'm going to come over here and grab all these files and copy them in here. And there they are. Everything working as it should, right? Not really. <clears throat> and there's a reason for it, and we're going to fix that reason. Now, if we click on here, stuff's missing. And it's because our file paths for these are different than what his were. And there's nothing you can really do about it. It just is what it is. Uh, another thing here, um, if you look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six items, yet there's only five here. Uh, now that we've added it, did I close it already? I sure did. I'm going to right click, because I forgot about this, show an explorer. 
we have something that's one kilobyte in size. You can delete it. It's not needed. It's not necessary. It's from his project, uh, and he may not have even known that it was there. So close out of that so that's gone because, you know, it doesn't hurt. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this up. <clears throat> we're going to connect it to how it's supposed to be. So first things first, right here, this one needs to be the convolve texture. So if we come over here and we find uh, the convolve texture, place that in there. <clears throat> we also need that in this one. Yeah. And there we go. We have those connected in there. Now, that was pretty cool that, you know, it reconnected it for us. And you would hope and wish and desire that when you do this and change these to what they're supposed to be, which is the extract depth, that it would connect them. It's not. Sorry. It's not that easy. The world does not revolve around you in that way. <clears throat> so, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to delete this one because they're identical at this point. So we have to do this the difficult way. Oh, there's one more that I forgot about. We need to get the sample scene texture neighbor UV. And place that right in there. Now we can connect things how they're supposed to be. <clears throat> so from here, the INV size, whatever INV is supposed to be, would go into the texel offset. Now, what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a multiply, place that in here. I'm going to hold down S, and we're going to name this parameter line width. Otherwise, it's going to have a specific width no matter what. And it may be too thin, it may be too thick for you. This gives us control. <clears throat> so we're going to place that here. So with the way this works, it's ingenious, but it's messy. <clears throat> Would have been easier if he had, you know, ordered these properly, but he didn't. And I'm not going to take the time to do it, and neither should you. So how this works, middle center. So that means middle center. Middle left is right here, middle left. Bottom left, obviously bottom left. Top center, right there. Top left, goes right there. And you, you see what's going on here, now bottom center. So I'm gonna keep my mouth shut and just get the rest of these done real quick. And then we will go on to the next step. All right, next step <clears throat> is we come over here and we do this again. We need this to be in the top left, top center, and top right. Then we have our middle center, middle right. Ah. Bottom left, I mean uh, middle left, and then all of our bottoms. Now, the next part of these rows. <coughs> We're going to come over here, move these over so it's easier for me to tell. All right, this one goes into row two. The zero, zero, zero goes into row one. And the final one goes right there. Now we're going to save a bit of time by deleting these. And then I'm going to come over here that over a bit. As you can see, these are different from that. So you don't want to do any more than this right here. Come over here, place that into there. I'm going to delete that, place that into here, and that right there. Now, <clears throat> we need to get these set up. One, zero, negative one goes into row two. 
2, 0, negative 2 goes into row 1, which means row 0 is 1, 0, negative 1. And now we have it all set up. As you can see right now, we have the outline colors orange, and that's fine. And now we have the whole thing set up how we want. We're going to save it so that it does its thing. Close out of that. Save that for now. So now we have our material all set up and ready. Now we need to go to this instance because this instance no longer has the material attached to it. We're going to come over here, but that is the parent. And now we have our line width and our outline color, which is an orange. There we go. Now we have this all set up how we need it. So the question you're asking is how do we, oh, we don't want it to be orange when that's red. We're going to go ahead and change this to pink. There we go. <clears throat> so like I was saying, we don't necessarily want to do anything to the material itself of the object. We would have to do that with all of them. And that would be very time consuming and would just, it wouldn't be very wise to do. So we're going to do this in the way that that tutorial shows, which is through a post-process volume. So we come in here to place actors. You may be utilizing up here, but I'm old fashioned and I enjoy having this. And you know, just type in post-process volume and place this in here. Now the very, oh, I've already got one in here somewhere. It's probably because that's how this level is. Yep, there it is, right there. So I'm just gonna delete this one and I'm going to use the one that's already in here. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, which I'm sure this one already is, type in infinite and you're gonna to wanna to make sure this is checked, it needs to be checked. Now, once that is done, the next thing that we're going to do is, sorry, I'm checking my notes here. We're going to click in here, post process materials. We're going to click this array, select asset reference, and we're going to come over here to the material instance and place this in here. Now, obviously you can rename this as you see fit. Um, I have all mine renamed how it's easier for me to see it. This isn't mine, so I haven't cleaned it up. And I'm just showing you how to get this amazing effect. So now that we have this set up just like that, we need to do something else. We now need to go, sorry, again, I'm opening up. Now, come here to this right here. And earlier we set the look at, and we set up the look at and all that jazz. <clears throat> the next thing we wanna do is we need for this one, it's a cube, but it could be, a, uh, it would be a static mesh um, in most cases. Pull out, set, render, custom, Place that right there, put that into here, set this to true, compile and save. I do believe I've done all of the steps if I recall correctly, so let's find out. Look at that, we've got a pink highlight. Now, yep, it's hard to see the pink with the orange. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna change this color again. I will change it to, yeah, why not? There we go. And then for this instance, I will go nutso on the red and the blue. Because why not? Save, we hit play, there we go. We have it highlighted. That is how you set up a highlight. And as you can see, when we're no longer targeting it, it goes away. When we're targeting it, it comes back. Now that leads to the very next thing that we're gonna go ahead and get done because we have plenty of time. Right now, we don't know what we're looking at. 
there's nothing indicating on the screen on what we're looking at. So let's go ahead and get that set up. It's really easy and we're gonna keep it that way um, because I have yet to dive deep into how this all works. Um, I'm not gonna have this in the interaction system itself. I'm going to create a new folder called UI uh, just in the content folder. Open this up and then right click blueprint class, type in HUD, select, and I'm going to name this HUD and then tutorial because that's what I want to name it. <clears throat> and I'm going to open this up. We're going to go into the event graph. And we will right click and do receive draw HUD. Don't need these. I'm going to close it. If we need them in the, in the future, we'll get them in the future. And then we're going to come out here, draw rect. Going to make this white. You can make it whatever color you want. And the target. We don't have to do this, but for my sanity, I do it anyways. Put it as self. <clears throat> now then, out of size X, we're going to get a divide. Divide it by 2. And put it into scene X. And again, we're going to do this. Put it into scene Y. I'm not sure why they're five and five. I can't remember why I did it, but that's what we're just gonna do. <clears throat> Essentially what this is doing is it's finding the very center of both the X and Y of the screen and drawing it. Compile and save. Now we need to come over here into project settings and go into maps and modes. And in selected game mode, put that down and HUD class, we wanna make it our new HUD. Now when we hit play, oh that's why I did 5 and 5. The 5 and 5 that's right here <clears throat> is the size. So it's gonna be 5 pixels by 5 pixels in size. I chose 5 pixels by 5 pixels because I have a 4k monitor so I need more pixels. <laughs> so 2 might work better for you if you're using 1080p. As you can see I got a little white dot right here. So now, I know exactly where I'm looking and where I'm targeting to. Now, isn't that nice and nifty? So with that, we're going to end this tutorial. On the next one, we're going to work on the zooming in and uh, transferring of third person to first person. Uh, and once that is done, the whole system is ready to be utilized by the player. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please put them in the comments down below or join my Discord and place them there. Uh, please make sure that you have liked and subscribed if you have not already. And I look forward to seeing you in the future. Bye.